Hello, my name is Casey Promozik, and this is a video that's a bit of a tutorial slash demo of my browser-based frequency modulation synthesizer. Um, the goal is just going to be to do a quick overview of its capabilities, give you a feel for how to use it, what the UI does, and um, yeah, that's that'll be what this is. If you're more interested in like how it was built and a technical overview of you know, the different web technologies and other uh, stuff about frequency modulation itself, I have a blog post which is linked right down here in the bottom left corner of the synthesizer which you can check out. So, as I said, I'm not going to go over frequency modulation here, but it is a method of synthesis that is quite powerful and very versatile. There's a bunch of different, you know, it's, a, it's been around since the 1960s, so there's, there's a bunch of different synthesizers that implement it, and um, yeah, you can do a lot with it. And it's actually pretty cheap computationally. Um, this synthesizer is polyphonic, which means that there's multiple different notes that can be played at the same time. And um, yeah, let's just start with the, the left and go to the right. So first thing you want to check out is the list of presets here. I've built a bunch of different sound, different styles you can try out to get a feel for all the different kind of stuff that this synthesizer can do. So as I mentioned, frequency modulation synthesis is very versatile. You can get a little, you know, a nice plucky sound like we started with, or very harsh and you know, aggressive sounds like this for you know, EDM bass lines and similar things. So yeah, if you want to try out the different presets, that's the best place to get started to see like what this kind of sound can do for you. And yeah, you just pick it from the list and try it out. So, your eyes might immediately go to this modulation matrix right in the middle of the screen here. This is indeed where all the action happens. So, if you're not familiar with FM synthesis, this is going to be kind of difficult to follow, but we'll start with something simple here. Um, each one of these along the rows here are an operator, which means it's basically an, basically an oscillator. So, by themselves, like if you have none of them activated, um, you won't hear any sound. But as soon as you turn up one, you can hear a sine wave, which is the ba most basic waveform possible. It's the simplest sound possible. So you can actually turn on the spectrogram here and see that there's only one harmonic, one, one frequency, no harmonics, one frequency. And if you change the waveform type down here by selecting the operator on the left side, you can get a different type of waveform. So this is a sawtooth, it's actually being filtered slightly. Very harsh, so we're going we're gonna to leave the filter on to get some of that top half off. But you can see there's many more harmonics in a square wave. So yeah, there's no F this is no FM synthesis yet, this is just a single operator. But as soon as you add another operator and that modulates the first one, as you can see up at the top here, operator 2 to 1 modulation index. So that means this operator here it's going to modulate this first operator, and the degree that it modulates it is determined by this cell right here. So we can hear what that sounds like by turning this slider up. Let's get a little bit of a lower pitch. And that right there is the signature FM synthesis sound. That is, that's it right there. <laughs> so basically, you can chain together these operators in any way you want. Um, so we can have this, you know, operator two modulating operator one, and then we can have operator three modulating operator two, which has a different sound to it as well. We can add, you know, keep adding more. And if you get too far, it's just going to turn into noise, especially for higher frequency sounds. Um, but yeah, basically we're defining a graph of uh, operators modulating each other, and these, these cells determine the index of modulation, which is just how much they modulate each other. You might, if you're familiar with FM synthesis, you might be thinking about FM8, which is a very popular FM synthesizer. I've not used it myself, but I've seen several videos, and there's definitely some similarities between this and FM8. All right, so some other stuff you can do with the modulation matrix, besides simply using constant modulation indexes, is we can use an envelope generator to um, generate our modulation indices. So right here we're going to define the range of output values we want for this envelope generator, which is like um, the, f 
yeah, using the slider right here, and then we can hear what that sounds like. So it'll modulate it high at first, and then it'll eventually decay down to a lower value. So if we and we can make the length of the um, envelope longer or shorter as well. Um, so yeah, you, there's as many, well there's a certain number, but you can add additional envelope generators or ADSRs for these other modulation indices as well. So we can create a, you know, ADSR2 or we can add an additional one and switch to it too. And each one can be used in multiple places, um, have its own length, have its own envelope, and yeah, each place it's used can have a different output range. All right, moving on. I know um, we're brushing over a lot of stuff. There's a lot of functionality packed into this thing. I have some docs. If you hover over these question marks and click, I have um, pretty detailed documentations about each of these different pieces of the synthesizer. So the next thing we can look at are the effects. We'll go back to something relatively simple, um, just to have an, an, an easy easel to, to draw on here. This is just a two operator setup. We have mod, uh, no, operating operator two modulating operator one with a, an envelope. It's a classic FM sound. Um, so yeah, if you click on main effect chain, we can add effects that are applied to the output of the entire synthesizer. So we have a couple built-in effects here, not too many. They're all um, built into the synthesizer directly. And yeah, to add one, you just select which one you want to use. We'll use Big Crusher and then hit add. And then each you know, each effect has its own settings you can you can change to um, be whatever you want. Just like the modulation indices, you can have a constant value in envelope generator or a multiplier of the base frequency which is useful for some, but not this one. So let's just see. Classic butt crusher sound. We'll try one other effect out here. We have um, a wave folder. It's a cool one, but it's quite intense. Let's turn the volume down a little bit. love that one. It's a really cool effect and it works well with a lot of other FM synthesis sounds I've found. All right, so I guess this is a good time to show off the filter, which currently is disabled. If we uncheck this checkbox, the filter will be enabled. So this is a bi-quad filter built on top of the one that web audio exposes directly. And there's a couple different modes. I have some more complex filters higher order low pass and high pass filters as well as all the built in web audio filter types. So we can check out band pass. And yeah, it works pretty much as you would expect if you are familiar with digital filters. Um, this too can be um, uh, modulated using an envelope generator, excuse me. and. Um, yeah, you can use the exact same method for doing that as for the modulation indices. Um, yeah, there's a couple other features we can take a look at real quick. There's a built-in oscilloscope here. We're going to re-disable the filter. So this uses Web Audio's um, audio, excuse me, analyzer node so we can see the actual waveform that's being generated from the synthesizer. And one other visualization we have is a spectrogram, which we've showed off already, I'm pretty sure. But it looks a lot cooler when we have more stuff going on. Let's check out a more interesting preset here. First time I saw spectrograms, I thought they were just the coolest thing ever. You can actually see what's going on in the sound. And interestingly, this pattern right here looks a lot like what human speech looks like when you put it through a spectrogram. 
And you can kind of hear the resemblance between <laughs> this and like a guttural growl or similar noise. Which is why I named it dubstep -y growl, because those kind of sounds are very popular in dubstep and similar genres of music. Um, one other feature we have is the ability to use MIDI devices, hardware MIDI devices, using Web MIDI. So if you connect up a MIDI device, you can hit refresh MIDI device list. I don't have one handy. But yeah, it'll show up in the drop down. You just pick it, and then you should be able to just play notes on it, and they will play on the synthesizer, just like using this keyboard. Um, so yeah. That is a high level overview of. Yeah, this web synth, uh, FM synth. Uh, I guess I can show off Detune as well. It's uh, it's pretty much what you'd expect. We'll go back to a simple patch here. Enable Detune. And like everything else, you can modulate it with an envelope generator or other stuff like that. Um. Oh yes, I should. <laughs> this is kind of out of order, but it's fine. It's informal. One other thing that this uh, synthesizer done, which it does, which is pretty non-standard and experimental, is allowing you to put effects on the operators themselves, which is definitely weird and quite a unique effect. So, if we go and you know have this operator modulate this one, and then what we can do is we can add an effect to the output of this operator before it modulates the first operator. So let's try spectral warping, which is a, is a weird one. I don't know how to describe it. So there's a lot of different stuff you can get that happens with this. It, a lot of it's very unpredictable and experimental, as I mentioned, but it's something, it's an additional layer to play with. Uh, just one more level of configuration to add to an already extremely configurable synthesizer and extremely versatile synthesis method. So yeah, that is the gist of it. Um, Web this okay. So this FM synthesizer is part of a larger uh, audio synthesis project that I've been building, which I'm just calling WebSynth. Probably should change that name at some point. Um, it is focusing on audio synthesis in the browser using Web Audio. Um, yeah, eventually I want to make it into a sort of full-fledged digital audio workstation-esque project. But for now, yeah, it's just a loose collection of various modules and other projects. The full source code for this and everything else is on GitHub. If you have any feedback, run into bugs, please let me know on my Twitter or GitHub or email. All those links should be easy to find if you Google my name or look up my username on GitHub. So yeah, please do let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to hear it if you made it through the video. Um, yeah, thanks for checking it out and hope you find it cool.